What's poppin' my peeps, how's it going? This week on the Monday Challenge, we're diving back into another Stranger Things tutorial and we're doing the upside down effect. Let's get it going. If you guys are new to the channel, what's poppin'? My name's Burke Cullinane. I do these weekly filmmaking challenges to learn new things and grow as a filmmaker. Over the past couple weeks, I've been doing a Stranger Things series of the Monday Challenge where I do challenges based around Stranger Things effects that I like. Absolutely love that show. It's slamming, banging, slamming, banging, slamming, slamming. I'd like to try and keep this series going as long as I can, so if there's anything you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get it done. But if you didn't see, at the end of last week's episode, I actually did this upside down effect. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to leave a few links in the description below for a lot of the elements that I used in this. I'll leave a Dropbox link to the overlays I used. I'll also leave a link to a lot that I created for the upside down looking color grade. And then I'll leave a link down in the description below for where I found the particle effect. All right, so we're in Premiere, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have it like flicker in, and then hang for a couple seconds, and then flicker out. So all you're gonna do is use the blade tool by clicking C on your keyboard, and then select the section that you wanna remove. I'm just gonna do one frame off, and then one frame on, one frame off, one frame on, one frame off. Three frames off, two frames on. That's all we're gonna do. And then I'm just gonna play it, and wherever I feel like it should switch back, that's where I'll also do two frames on, three frames off. I'll basically do the same thing that I did right here. So basically, this middle section right here is going to be the upside down. This is the part that I'm going to do this upside down effect on. So I went onto Google and I found some stock images that were free to use. So I just did a search for dead vines, and then I came over to my tools, changed the size to large, and then usage rights to labeled for reuse with modification. That's just filtering it so that you can use these images and you're not gonna get any copyright issues. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag all four of these onto my timeline here. And then I'm just gonna play around with the position on where I want these to lie. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna do the right side first. I wanna change all of these to black and white, so if I just go to my tint, it's already set to black and white. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my opacity and mess with the blending mode. Maybe color burn. Yeah, kind of like that. I'm not sure if I'm feeling this one. I wonder if I maybe delete this. I got a better idea. I'm gonna duplicate this layer here. And then I'm going to flip it horizontally. Change the position so it just kind of mirrors the image. And I'm also going to apply an edge feather to the top layer. Crank that sucker to like 75. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two layers, select them both, right click and nest them together. Now what we can do is come to our blending mode, change it to color burn, and now I'm gonna mask out this window. So if I change the opacity to like 25 just while I work, that's gonna give me the ability to mask out this window a lot easier. Come over to the pen tool on our opacity and then we'll start masking out this window. Um, we're gonna wanna just crank the feather on this to probably about 25 and then click the invert because right now it's just masked onto the actual curtain and we wanna invert that so it's on the walls. And if we bring the opacity back up to 100, you can see that it has affected everything else around it. But now I'm gonna leave this around 75 because I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer by selecting option and dragging up to the layer above it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask out some of these vines just to make it more intense in some spots. I actually just made a couple quick adjustments here. So I changed the blending mode on the bottom two to multiply and I left those at 100%. And then I added another layer 
of the bottom one, so the one with just the curtain masked out. And I changed that to color burn and then changed the blending mode to 50%. That way it just made it kind of pop a little bit more. You get more of those textures from the concrete of the walls and the vines and all that stuff. Now the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is add some particles. So what I did was I applied two particles with two different blending modes. And the reason that I did that is because I, I kinda want a lot of stuff going on. First one, I did a linear add. And I changed that opacity to 75% so it's not on full blast. And then I took another section of those particles, not the same exact section as the first one, overlaid that on top of that and did a screen at 100%. Now the next thing that I gotta do is the color grade for the upside down. Now I actually already created this color grade and I will leave that color grade in that Dropbox file. So if you guys do wanna mess around with that, you can. But if you did wanna do it yourself, basically what I did was I changed the temperature, I cooled it down, I took the tint down to green, brought the contrast up. And then I also did play with the curves. I added a little bit of an S curve. And then in my color wheels, I brought a lot of it down to the blues and greens and all that stuff. Brought the shadows down, brought the mid-tones down. Just gave it that gritty, grungy, cool look. Now that this thing's all put together, let's take a look. So yeah, that's pretty much how I created that upside down effect that you guys may have seen in my outro in last week's video. Now, since this setup was simple, since it's just a curtain and all that stuff, I didn't bring this into After Effects. Now, if you wanted to go a little more complex with this, you wanted to motion track, you just wanted to do a few more effects, you could bring this into After Effects and do that. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely dive into that one. If there's any other effects, Stranger Things related that you guys would like to see me cover in this series, let me know in the comments below. But with that said, appreciate you guys for watching. You can like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things that you do. And as always, stay hungry.